Hi, welcome to the free BST channel. I was having uh, a discussion uh, with a viewer. Uh, he was uh, uh, enthusiastic about uh, building his own uh, uh, Freena server, but he had uh, uh, quite a lot of confusion, which we had a to and fro discussion because since I have built a free BST NAS, uh, there are a few things uh, he want to get clarified. Uh, but uh, one among the questions he asked is, uh, do we need to get any RAID controller or uh, he need to set uh, his, uh, you know, motherboard as a RAID configuration or something like that. So I kind of vaguely responded because I felt uh, this is quite uh, uh, redundant. I kind of covered about these things in some of the topics uh, covered in uh, my other uh, channel, uh, the Linux channel on the NAS operating system as well as in FreeBSD channel as well. Uh, but I thought uh, I want to discuss about uh, this RAID controller part alone in this episode. It is quite understandable why they, uh, you know, get such confusion. Even I was thinking I need to get some LSI controller or something like that. I mean to say the host bus adapter uh, with the RAID support and stuff like that or else I need to use uh, uh, my motherboard uh, as a I mean, in the BIOS, you can set as a RAID controller and stuff. So, I was quite confused and then later I can able to understand uh, when you use uh, uh, FreeNAS and uh, it uses uh, ZFS, it's not just FreeNAS in case you can install uh, Ubuntu server and then you can, uh, uh, you know, uh, initiate the ZFS, uh, you know, uh, file system. And if you use uh, the ZFS file system, uh, what happens is the ZFS file system, you can assume it is more like a software defined storage. Uh, it's same uh, similar to your uh, network uh, uh, part, like we have this uh, software defined networking. So in the context of uh, ZFS, uh, it kind of wants to get the RAW access of uh, the storage a drive uh, like your hard drive so, so it wants to get a raw access of the hard drive and anytime you put any uh, RAID controller or something like that what happens is it abstracts this and it presents like a, a you know single uh, drive uh, uh, you know uh, volume okay so when you uh, put any RAID 5 or something like that for five drives and then exposed to the operating system the operating system sees that as a single uh, large uh, storage medium it doesn't know anywhere any information about the underlying uh, drive details so in a way that abstraction is uh, fine if you want it as a traditional uh, you know ride setup so anything happens uh, to such a system what happens is you need to do uh, uh, manage the you know uh, replacement of the drive everything in terms of hardware okay the operating system will have no clue and in case if you have built uh, any storage server or something like that what happens is if something happens you just need to go back to your again uh, the RAID controller uh, firmware after the BIOS you can go there and then you can do all the settings so if in case the RAID controller goes bad, then uh, it's a panic situation. You need to get something similar. And then sometimes uh, the, so the data, whatever is in that drives will not be compatible with the, the other RAID controller. So you need to get the similar RAID controller and you need to, uh, you know, replace this RAID controller. So it's going to be quite tricky. And as well, the, these RAID controllers may have even... Uh, an additional uh, power backup and stuff because these RAID controllers may have some kind of a storage buffer uh, so that uh, when whenever you copy any data the data will get cached onto this uh, storage uh, buffer so it can be some type of DRAM or any sort of you know chips so they will hold the memory until the time they get moved onto that you know secondary storage like this uh, NAS uh, hard drives okay so that's what happens in the RAID controller so it completely abstracts and it gives that abstract uh, uh, you know uh, access to the operating system layer okay so the OS no longer see the ha hard drives if the RAID is enabled on this RAID controller so 
this is something is never been decided in a free nas free nas as i said it's more like a software defined storage so what happens is it needs the raw access of the drives and free nas everything whatever it is done in the hardware via the raid controller free nas does it in the software layer and it does it in a much sophisticated way so since free nas has that extensive uh, you know uh, uh raid like features in the you know nf uh, zfs file system uh, although i say free nas just assume it is a zfs file system i don't want to say each time uh, zfs sometimes i may say the term zfs sometimes i may use the term free nas so just imagine it is uh, the zfs file system so zfs file system uh, gets the raw access of the drive and any data it gets from the drive it is not going to treat it uh, uh, it is not going to say uh, it is not going to assume that it is a uh, you know reliable uh, value it is going to cross compare with the other redundant copies of that uh, you know storage uh, data stored data i mean to say from the storage medium so it is going to cross check and uh, it is going to validate so it is never going to trust blindly anything it gets from the drive it is going to cross uh, refer and then it is going to see whether it is valid and in case if there is any corruption it will attempt to repair these uh, damaged uh, portions of this uh, you know uh, zfs file system chunks in a way uh, as you provide uh, these uh, drives uh to the you know expose this drives directly to the zfs so, so zfs knows the amount of drives has been there on that uh, uh, server and in case uh, if uh, something happens to the motherboard something happens to your uh, uh you know sata controller hp or something like that uh, what happens is you can replace you can uh, even uh, move all the drives to a new system new server and then you can just put the same you know free nas operating system uh, thumb drive or uh, you know uh, installed drive uh, sata drive or whatever uh, in which the free nas os is installed it's just going to run as it is almost transparent provided it matches the hardware uh, specs of that new you know system so it is quite easy and in case if there is any mismatch it is still easy if you have uh, the free nas config stored in uh, as a backup uh, you can do a fresh uh, free nas install and then you can restore and it is going to work seamless and again this is kind of possible because again it approaches like a, a true software defined storage okay so it is like you know sts so we have stn which stands for software defined networking so stn uh, the principle behind stn is whatever is possible in the traditional networking uh, uh uh paradigm where you have uh, you know these network uh, infrastructure is quite uh, static versus in the software defined networking it is been put as a part of uh, you know uh, in the software uh, framework so again it is same analogous to your you know virtual machines when you compare a compute versus a virtual machine sort of a compute transformation okay so same way you have this uh, software defined uh, storage so one example is somewhat we can compare uh, uh, one among them is free nas the other one is uh, we can even compare gluster and other uh, you know uh, counterparts okay so although we know that gluster works completely different than in you know this thing but in a way even uh, free nas uh, uh, the zfs is more geared towards an approach like sts okay so it is purely software defined storage so it is more resilient if something happens to the drive you can just uh, replace them and uh, it is uh, going to cope up with such an issue uh, and one more interesting fact is uh, when you do any drive uh, when you do any drive uh, rebuild okay uh, even whether it is resilvering or it is a drive rebuild if there is any corrupted drive you have taken out and you have replaced when you do the rebuild if there is any issue uh, if there is any power uh, uh, blackout or anything like that uh, you can shut the shut down the server and then you can uh, restore this operation once the power comes up so it is going to work uh, seamless okay so all these things are possible because it approaches like this sts uh, sort of a way so this is why you never need any raid controller and moreover even uh, if you uh, check uh, the specs of uh, uh, 
uh, or uh, documentation of uh, free NAS uh, by IX systems, they have even recommended uh, you should not use any uh, you know, uh, you know, RAID for freeness. So we can see one example uh, in the case of uh, Linux Tech Tips. He had a Vonix server, and uh, one among the RAID controllers or have gone bad, and then he struggles to get that information, and then he seeks a third-party, uh, you know, uh, support professional support and then finally he tries to get back his data so which is why we just never need to uh, put any raid controllers although if you have a very large server you can put some couple of uh, multiple raid controllers and you can do all combinations you can expose many drives as single drive in free nas and you can do groups of them bunches of them uh, you know you can do all sorts of combination but in a way you should not never do that you should never have to do that because you have to expose raw uh, individual drives to zfs file system so that it will know the smart characteristics and in case if any drive is degrading or having any symptoms of you know uh, drive failure it will uh, show you the warnings uh, much before in hand okay so hope uh, this gives uh, uh, clarity uh, this is a commonly asked frequently asked question uh, it's a common FAQ you can find in many discussion forums and uh, stuff like that but uh, i don't want to give an opinion just as a youtuber i want to give an opinion as a uh, you know systems uh, aspect uh, since I work in uh, system software um, development although I work mostly in networking I do uh, have done in the past certain uh, projects in uh, storage uh, have done in nice because initiator target stuff long back and uh, stuff like that so I'm uh, giving uh, my opinion as a system standpoint a guy who works in uh, Linux kernel and stuff and uh, maybe in the future uh, I have some agenda I may work in uh, free BST on a STN like uh, situation so so free NAS the ZFS the approach of ZFS uh, if I want to conclude you just imagine that it is having the same paradigm like STS so it is a software defined storage where it is lot more resilient and lot more things traditionally done in a different way it's been automated in the software layer and which is why uh, generally it is suggested that you have uh, you know a uh, you know the memory you use uh, it is uh, better that you don't use a consumer grade rather than that you use um, you know ECC checked memory so stuff like that but although it is not mandatory it is better if you have a ECC checked memory because FreeNAS is going to trust whatever it comes from RAM rather than anything from the secondary storage so this is the idea behind it although it is not so strict and mandatory okay so again this is again at another even more commonly asked FAQ where everyone will get confused about so hope this clarifies about a certain aspect so if you have any questions uh, feel free to discuss in uh, youtube uh, comments or uh, post your queries in uh, email thanks a lot for joining me stay tuned have a nice day bye bye